Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful real estate investors, brought to you by Steve Talker Capital, promoting prosperity and harmony to help you flourish in all areas of life. Join in as we explore the motivations and goals of real estate investors and how their ability to invest abundantly has provided them with the time and freedom to contribute to the world in a creative and thoughtful way. Now, please welcome your host, Dr. Allen. Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors, where we delve deep into the lives of our successful guests to learn the secrets of thriving to flourish abundantly in all areas of life. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. Over the last nine years, today's guest built her real estate portfolio close to 500 doors with a value of over 60 million. Her strategy is the long-term buy and hold of multifamily apartment complexes. Beyond personal investing, her passion is helping new and experienced real estate investors grow their real estate portfolio and build passive income to live the lifestyle that gives them their greatest financial options and opportunities. Her vision is to empower people to educate them on financial options. I'm so pleased to welcome back to the show, Edna Keep. Thanks so much, Alan. It's definitely my pleasure to be here. I'm so glad to have you back. What's it like up in Saskatchewan these days? Is autumn on its way? Oh, definitely. Our leaves are already starting to turn. And yesterday, oh, it was so cold. I couldn't even be outside without a jacket on. I didn't like that at all. Our evenings have started turning cool here in Appalachia, but our days are still pretty warm. I haven't seen any leaves are not changing yet either, but they should be starting. Not time of year. What is COVID like up there in Saskatchewan? How are you all dealing? We have very minimal cases, Alan. We're a small province. I think there's like slightly over a million in our whole province. So we're spread out as it is. And I always say we, we already practice social distancing because <laughs> we live, first of all, in a small town, about 3,000 people, plus run an acreage, which is outside the town. So we're social distanced at any time, let alone now. But yeah, there's very few cases. Wonderful. What has COVID been like for your rental markets? You do you have housing in Memphis as well as in Saskatchewan, correct? Yes. Our buildings in Memphis, we're still working on them. So uh, we're just starting to fill them. So it's because we had to do a lot of uh, renovations when we first took it over. But you know, in Saskatchewan, it wasn't too bad. People tended to stay home a lot more. They all got their CERB benefits. So rent wasn't an issue for most of them. We did have a few social services people that got it in their mind that we were getting some kind of tax break, so they shouldn't have to pay rent. And uh, so we've had to do a few evictions once the uh, ban got lifted, which was for us was August 4th. But most of them were really good out. They caught up. Some of them got a little bit behind because of work challenges and stuff like that. But I think we're pretty good shape. And then we actually did all the mortgage deferrals that they allowed us to do. It allowed us to cash up and it worked out really good. Plus, you never know ahead of time what is going to happen. So when the application was offered, we thought, you know what? Yeah, we will. We can always pay it down later and see how it goes. So that part didn't affect us too much. Wonderful. You have, have several different complexes. So tell us about uh, your, to this point in time, what's your favorite complex and why has it been the most enjoyable experience? With our buildings, you mean? Our favorite one is still, uh, I still consider this one a home run. We bought 144 units in one package in 2012. We were able to have our investors fully paid out in 36 months. So meaning what we did is we renovated, increased rents, and then we were able to refinance, pull all our cash out, get all the investors paid, have a strong positive cash flow. And our investors stayed with us and went on to purchase two more buildings. But all the cash out of that particular building is done. And it, it's doing really well for us still to this day. We considered that one a home run. And I always tell my students, one deal, one deal can make all the difference in the world to you. And you never know when that deal is going to come along. For us, it was 2012 and we started this in 2007. So it was five years in and we still to this date, this Memphis one might turn out to be similar, but we, to this day, we haven't got such a home run as that one was. Yeah, that is so true. One deal uh, can make all the difference, but it can make all the difference in either direction. I'm sure not only did you have this home run and it's cer certainly a wonderful thing that you did, 
what was your biggest nightmare in terms of your complexes? I'm still living it too. In 2014, we bought a 27 unit in our city and we had just bought an 18 unit that was very similar. Rents needed to be increased. Uh, they hadn't been increased. The rents were really high in our area at that time. And the average rent was maybe, I don't know, $800 there. We could felt we could move them up to 1250 for the two bedrooms. In the meantime, the city allowed a whole bunch of brand new condos to be built in the area. And <clears throat> it wasn't supposed to affect our rental market because it was all meant for homeowners because we were getting a lot of in-migration at the time. But you know what? When the oil stopped, like the, the, there's such a controversy in our country right now about allowing the Alberta and Saskatchewan oil to flow. That really stopped the immigration into our city. So all those brand new condos got switched to rental units. So what we used to be able to command in rent, like $1,200 a month for a two bedroom, now the new units were being rented for that. So in order for us to keep our building occupied and, and still not 100% occupied, we've had to reduce our rents a lot. I think the maximum we're getting on a two bedroom right now is 1050 So $200 a unit per month is huge at that level. No. And we still own it and still suffering through it because we do think that eventually the condos will be purchased up, but it's been a tough market for the last uh, few years there. So that you said that was an 18 unit? 27. 27 units. So 27 yeah. units times about uh, 200, 200 to $250 a month. That's a huge difference in your cash flow. And that certainly is a huge difference in the cap rate of that, of that property. It would be a challenge at this point in time to, to sell that property at a profit but your strategy is to buy and hold anyway. Yeah. So you went into that with the idea of holding. We did. And like I always tell my investors and the students, even in your nightmare scenario where you don't get any cash flow, all your income goes to repairs and maintenance, or in our case, occupancy or lack of occupancy, we still have your mortgage paid out every single month. The mortgage is paid off. So in the long run, even if we held that property 20, 25 years and it's paid off, that's still a better return than 90, 95% of investments out there. So even though it's considered a nightmare in our industry, if you just hang on, ride it out, eventually they never are worth the same price 20 years out, never ever, unless it, you let it really go bad. And that's the part we have to continually keep mm -hmm. in the back of their mind, in your mind mm -hmm. that real estate cyclical, it will come back and you don't get a home run every single time. And mm -hmm. you have to take the kind of good with the bad. And fortunately for us, 90% of ours, when we think door wise, 90, 95 five percent are performing well it's like bad tenants you still tend to focus on that five percent that's not doing well because it's always how can we make it better how can we make it better how can we make it better and sometimes no matter what we've tried we haven't been able to make it better so then we sit back and go okay we might just have to ride this one out and make our money on the other one so that's the attitude we're trying to keep right now you just recently got into this memphis property what was it two three four months ago you got in march that. yes we purchased it March, yeah. Walk us through that process. This was your first out of Canada purchase, is that correct? We had purchased some before, but we never kept any. Like we actually purchased a, and I can't remember because it was so long ago, it was back in 2008, I think. We bought a 24 unit in, was it in Indiana, I think, in an auction sale with a credit card for $225,000. <laughs> and when the partnership that I was working with at the time when it split up, they ended up with the assets. So I'm not really sure how it ever fared, but that was our, that was our first foray. But in this one, Alan, I've got a partner that actually has done all kinds of work. He used to actually be a buyer's agent for another real estate investment trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was still finding really great bargains, but they were past their limit, what they could buy in that area. And that's when he uh, approached us, my, myself and another fellow about maybe running our own REIT. And that's how we got involved. So he's actually the most active partner. Myself and the other partner are the capital raisers for the deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one partners had lots of experience in setting up funds and stuff like that. So he did all the legal work mm -hmm. required to set up the REIT. Uh, and he had all the team members to allow us to do it with, with not too much expense. So I, I don't have an active role in that one, which I absolutely love. Like we have meetings, we talk about stuff. And as a director, 
I've got some decisions and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I haven't even made it out to see the building. We, we had a trip planned in May, but because of COVID, we can't even get across the border. Mm -hmm. And if we do, we have to self-isolate for 14 days, which is really difficult. So we were thinking mm -hmm. of taking investors and students up to look, and, and we put that on hold indefinitely until we can figure that out. So you actually established a REIT for this particular property? Yeah. Like just a read in January with the idea that we hope to add a 500 doors to our portfolio this year. And with what we're working on right now, we're working on another, I think it's 380 as we speak. And the first one was the first unit we bought was 80. So we've got offers out and, and working with some in they're pretty rough shape so we've had a little bit of difficulty getting all the numbers and everything on them mm -hmm. because they haven't been run well but they're good areas and it just takes us a little bit of time to get that kind of stuff under contract to get it going but if all works well yeah we'll have another like maybe 400 units by the end of the year as well oh wow congratulations yeah, are those exciting. also are those in the states all in memphis right all now in. you have established a a process of going from a start to finish. Not only are you an investor, but you are a teacher and a coach. So can you share with us just a little bit about the process? It's a five-step process, I believe, from zero to $5,000 in 90 days. Is that right? Yep. 5000 a month in passive income is the idea there. And most people don't hit their target in 90 days, but within six months of starting, because it's well to people to wrap their mindset around it, learn the process before they can start working on it. I've had several students though that have actually made their first purchase before completing the course, but not in the 12 week period, but they got focused on a deal and then didn't get the rest of their homework assignments done. But yeah, the, the idea there is one, one of the very first things people have to wrap their head around is that yes, you can buy properties without your own money. There's always money that has to be in the deal, but it doesn't have to be your own money. Now, and to wrap your head around that, you have to understand why people would want to do that. Because a lot of people, when they first start out, they think, why would people just give me their money and let me invest and, and not just do it themselves? Well, there's a lot of work involved and not everybody wants to do it. Lots of people want to invest in real estate, but they don't want to be the active partner. So we have lots of room for passive partners, but you have to be able to educate them on the, the whys and the wherefores and the how to's to, uh, to get them interested. So that's one. One is like really wrapping your mindset around scaling. Because that, that's one of the things like most of the students that come to me have one to three properties already. So they've already determined that they want to be in real estate. They understand the basics of it. I don't have to teach them all the basics, but they do know they want to scale. They do know they can't do it by themselves. So hiring a coach is, is one of the steps in the process because you can read all the books in the world uh, you can take all the courses in the world, but if you don't take action, as far as I'm concerned, nothing. I get told by people who've never bought a building how I should be doing things. And I go, yeah, when you actually own a building, let's talk. Because until you don't tell me anything, uh, because it's all theory in your mind. And theory is great on paper, but it, it takes a specific mindset to handle all the challenges that come with real estate because there are lots you might have nailed a deal six months prior for example our deal or was mentioning the 18 unit and then the 27 the 18 unit we started it with the exact same process we had to evict tenants so that we could renovate and increase rents it worked like a charm exactly step by step how we planned it Six months later, same deal, same type of property. As a matter of fact, a nicer property because the second property was all a concrete and brick. The first one was a wood frame. So in reality, should be worth more and everything else. Didn't work. and But it was because of all the stuff that was going on in the background. People, some people would just stick their head in the sand and run away and say, oh, this whole system doesn't work. The system still works. You just have to wrap your head around the fact that not everything's going to go perfect. And that doesn't matter what kind of business you own. Not everything's going to go perfect. So if you don't master your mind and master your mindset, you're constantly going to be spinning your wheels. You're never going to really get anywhere. So that's one of the things I really like to focus on for people is if, if you completed my course in six, in, in six months or three months, and you haven't actually at least made offers on properties, 
it's a mindset issue. So then we work on that part because it, it's not that you don't know because you know. And some people think, oh, I got to go take another course. I got to read another book. I got to change my strategy. I got to. And they never actually pull the trigger. So my job, I feel, is like helping people pull that trigger so they, they get through step A to step Z on actually owning them and buying that property. Thinking big is another part of the process. You can add a house a year, which a lot of people do and do fine, or you can add an apartment building every three months. And that's again, part of it's a mindset issue to get to wrap your head around that. And some people say, why do you need like six apartment buildings? Nobody needs it, but it's what you want to do. You get involved in it and it's fun and it's exciting. And that's how wealth is built. It's not built by purchasing one or two houses that might meet your retirement needs, but it's not wealth. And that's what we were always working for is the wealth building portion. So just real briefly, what is that five-step process? Just one, two, three, four, five. It's a five-step oh, process, you, right? You hit me hard there. I always have to think that through. So the one is think big. you got to start okay. thinking bigger. you got to master your mindset. That's another one because you can't get bigger if you don't master your mindset. You got to hire a coach because I, I don't think, I know we couldn't. Some people maybe do it all on their own. I just can't see it being possible, at least in a decent time frame. You might stumble upon it. I've heard of many people. They worked in single family homes for the first 15 years of their career. And then they hired a coach and started moving on to multifamily and ended up with 15 unit in their first deal. That, that part is, is really huge. And then wrapping your head around the money part of it and why people want to invest with you is an, is another really huge step because it, and people will think well, I get 50% of the deal and I don't put any money in. They, they find that kind of hard to wrap their head around. So it's really understanding your value to the deal mm -hmm. because when you understand your value, you have no qualms at all asking for 50% of the deal, demanding 50% of the deal or higher. Just as another example, two years ago, we bought 40 units. We started out looking for $900,000 in capital with 25% down, 25 year amortization, conventional financing. And in the long run, we got 10% of the deal vendor financed and we got uh, CMHC financing, 15% down, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. In the long run, we needed to only two investors with 50,000 mm. apiece. So we ended up with 90% of the deal and investors ended up with 10. That again is a mindset shift to think that you could own that percentage of the deal without bringing a whole bunch of investors in. So that's the other one. And then let me think for a second for number five, because I don't have a written. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did. I put you on the spot here. I... Let me just think what the next one. You know what? I can't think of what it is right now, Alan. Let's uh, let's keep talking and it will come. Back. I do that all the time when I'm in front of a class. I just blank out and it's, oh my God, <laughs> I know this stuff. But yes, on the spot, you blank out. I apologize for that. If people watch my masterclass, which we'll talk about later on, all five steps are written in there very clear, each very one, clear. and in order to. We are coming to the end of our time. Edna, you have some marvelous free stuff for my viewers and listeners. I want you to talk about this free stuff. And as you're talking about that, I'm going to put up here on our screen for our viewers so they can actually see what it is you're talking about here. Tell us about the product here that I know is worth something like a three to $5,000 and you're giving it away free. So talk to us about your 90 day experience. I, I set up a free masterclass because I started having people, they were just asking me all the time, how, how did you get where you are and what's the process? So I share that five step system in this free training. It lasts about 45 minutes and it, it'll tell you everything you need to know about whether uh, multifamily is right for you. And if it's something that you want to think about getting into, we get into yeah, attracting investors, getting an acquisition fee. A lot of people don't think about that, but in every purchase that we do, and again, it's it's again, understanding your value, how much work that you put into actually pulling a deal together. If you buy a million dollar deal, acquisition fee up front, $10,000. It's even that one tip alone and how you do that in that training system will help you make a difference in your portfolio going forward. Because if you can get 
an acquisition on fee on every deal you do, that'll make all the difference in allowing you to move forward. That must be your number five is acquisition fee. It could be the fifth one. Yes. Yeah, so there is that, that we certainly want our viewers and listeners to check that out. But in addition to that, you have other free resources. You have a book and several other resources. So the first book I wrote was called Multiple Ways to Wealth. And uh, I have a free plus shipping offer with that. And it's a great place to start you thinking about what you might want to do in the future. I was still thinking about all the things I wanted to do in the future when I wrote that book. So it was, it's quite interesting. There's some exercises in there to make you think. Uh, just recently, actually, and it's not even full published, but it will be by the time you're your podcast comes out. I wrote another uh, book and it's all based on my course called 90 Days to 5K. And it's the the first steps to getting started with that. That's just going to be an ebook and that's going to be a free offer as well. And then I do Facebook lives every Monday and Friday. Monday is all about Mindset Monday, I call it. And Friday is free coaching Friday. And it's usually a real estate tip of some sort. They're short, sweet, uh, five to 10 minutes long. And it's it's something that you can actually take action on each and every time. And that's all free. And we're going to be starting to post more and more stuff on YouTube. So you can always find me on YouTube. All you have to do is Google my name. And we have all kinds of uh, free resources on there as well. Edna is easy to find on the internet. That's just Edna, E-D-N-A, keep, K-E-E-P, dot com. So she's easy to find. And all of those marvelous resources, a wealth of resources are free to all of those who venture there to ednakeep.com. Any other way that you want folks to get in touch with you besides uh, your, uh, your marvelous website there? No, that's my favorite way because you know what? Multifamily is not for everybody. If you listen to my masterclass and it resonates with you, then I like to do a strategy call with people to see if it's a good fit for us to work together. And that, but that's all detailed right in the masterclass. I don't even want people to try to reach out to me until they've been through that because it, there's work involved. And if you think there's not, or you think it's going to be super easy, it's, it's probably not the career for you. But if you want to take on the challenge and you want to grow as a person at the same time and do a very valuable service for the community at the same time, then it might just be for you. Edna, it's been a pleasure. Enlightened Investors, Edna was one of our first 10 guests on Creekside Chats. To learn more about Edna's fascinating rags to riches story, go to episode number 10. Just in brief, Edna was a single mother at 16 and struggled financially through her teens and 20s. She knows how it is to start from scratch and grow your wealth to develop financial freedom. She brings lots of wisdom from a fascinating life. She is truly an enlightened woman. Edna, thank you for joining us once again on Creekside Chats. You're most welcome. It was my pleasure, Alan. You're, you're a tremendous host. You ask really good questions. It's easy to follow along with you. Thank you for joining us on Creekside Chats with successful real estate investors, brought to you by Steed Talker Capital. For more information, as well as access to our free ebook on enhancing your well being through real estate investing, be sure to connect with us at steedtalker.com. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steed Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine and enhance the humane treatment of horses worldwide. Steed Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. Connect with us at steedtalker.com.